G'day, how are you? My name's Dan, and welcome to the Green and Gold Life. So today's vid is a little bit of a buyer's guide to one's first Scott Bonner. Yes! So uh, these are exciting times, you know? You're just one deal away from being able to lay down some thick old stripes in your own yard. So before procuring your first mower, there's a few things you need to keep in the back of your mind. So I've put together a list of a few things you should look out for when buying your first Scott Bonner. Rightio, let's get into it, eh? Alrighty, if you're one of the lucky ones, that finally got a meeting, uh, a date and a place to go and check out one of these Scotty B45s, then there's a few things you need to keep in the back of your mind when procuring one of these bad boys. The first of which being these mowers can be up to 50 years old. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking the Scotties here, but you need to realise there are probably going to be some worn or loosey-goosey parts and things like that, and you need to keep that in the back of your mind if you're building to a budget. For example, if there's no meat left in the bed knife or the reel's barely got any blades left in it, you know, you're going to be up for three or four hundred dollars in replacements there, so you need to factor that into the final price. One thing I hate doing is pre-negotiating a price before you leave. However, this bloke's probably got seven or eight blokes lined up behind you ready to jump on this thing, so, um, you know, just say subject to inspection. That way, if there's too many things wrong with it, you can bail and you're not picking up a dud. So don't be afraid to walk away from one of these mowers because if there's like $800 worth of repairs and you're still paying $500 for it, you know, it can quickly add up. That's a $1,300 machine, just like that. So um, don't be afraid to walk away if he's asking too much. And the final thing is you're probably gonna wanna bring some tools with you. You might wanna get inside the chain case that way you can get a look at all the gears, sprockets, chains, all of that. Or you might want to test the spark plug if it's not running. There's a few things that we're going to go through uh, in a little bit. But uh, yeah, bring some tools along with you. All right, let's go and pick up this Scotty, eh? The storm is coming, but I'm Here we are at the seller's front door. Now I'm not about to tell you how to behave at a secondhand exchange like this, be it Facebook or Gumtree, but there's a few things I like to do to try and get off on the right foot. Maintain good eye contact, flash in your pearly whites, introduce yourself well, and a fair income handshake. All right, let's do this. G'day mate, how are you? I'm Dan. G'day mate. You here for the Scott Bonner? Yeah, yeah, thought I'd come and check her out. Righto, she's out the back. Come on through. Righto mate, here she is. Alrighty, so the seller might stand over you like some kind of enforcer for a criminal gang, but don't worry about that, just get through your inspection. <laughs> Alrighty, so there's a little bit of a checklist, a few uh, key items that you want to check off to make sure she's all honky-dory before you pull the trigger on one of these bad boys. So for this inspection, you're going to want um, like a little tool kit. Now I picked this up from the big green shed for about 130 bucks. It's the best money I've spent to date because got me out of a bit of trouble and um, you know you can roll up to deals like this and just have a look at a few things so mate to me that was the best 130 bucks I've spent so far you might also want to consider bringing a rag so um, you know as you can see this one's a little bit dirty but uh, you know we might want to clean a few things to see if we can see some cracks or whatever so you might also want to consider bringing a rag with you so the first thing we're going to check is the reel and bed knife this is almost the equivalent of walking around kicking some tires, eh? So you want to make sure that you've got plenty of meat on both the reel and bed knife, because to replace those two would be around the $300 mark. This one's got about 12 or 13 mil worth of meat on the, on the reel. And on the bed knife, under here, there also seems to be plenty of meat. What you also want to do is give the reel a spin. 
and check the bed knife to see if it's been mowing stones or anything like that. So, um, I mean, I gave this a spin a little bit earlier and I couldn't see anything too untoward. So the cutting implements on this mower seem pretty good. It's probably gonna wanna grind uh, before you get cutting with it because it hasn't been running for 20 years. The next thing we're gonna wanna check is the clutch. So we wanna check it for completeness and, uh, and overall condition. Now, there's a few things jumping out at me on this one straight off the bat. The first thing was, this is missing the cotter pin. So the cotter pin goes in here and that helps hold the clutch assembly to the drive shaft of the engine. Second of all, I can see old mates drilled something out here and put in, I'd hate to call it wire because it's too thick for wire, but it looks like a little bit of bar or something in there and bent it to keep it in there. That, um, that's raising alarm bells to me because uh, you know, if that cotter pin may, maybe worked loose and minced that shaft out, you know, you could be up for a new drive shaft on the engine or a new clutch assembly. So that's sending out alarm bells to me. Furthermore, it was missing a bolt in here. So if that had been run like that, it would have been off balance and it could have shaken the unit and, uh, and helped mince all of that out. So that's actually raising alarm bells to me at this point, but uh, it might be a simple fix, I don't know. Uh, at this point, I'm not gonna pull it apart at my uh, inspection. That's just something I'm gonna have to uh, build into the price uh, at negotiation or roll the dice on it. Another common problem with these twin rail mowers was where the engine bolts to the twin rail. So uh, these can commonly have cracks in here. Now I'm suspecting this one doesn't have cracks because I don't think it's had a lot of use. Yeah, it looks a bit rough, but I don't believe this one's gonna have cracks because I think it's actually in pretty good condition. So using a rag or a screwdriver, just try and get rid of some of that gunk. So you can so you can get a bit, of, bit better of a look at what's going on there. So for this unit here, I'm not seeing anything too untoward. So um, that's not to say it's not cracked. If you remove the engine, there may be cracks underneath. Uh, if you had a little mirror, maybe you could use it to stick under there to have a look. But um, to me, I'm not seeing any evidence of cracking yet. So you're gonna wanna check the front side and the back side as well. The next thing we're gonna check are the rollers on this bad boy. So this front one's, you know, she's a little bit second hand, but it's still serviceable. This one's got a crack in the end cap. I think a new one's about 20 bucks, so not terribly concerned there. And we're gonna check the rear roller. So you wanna make sure you have a good look at the rear roller, because I don't believe they're reproducing those. So um, if you were to try and replace those, you'd have to find someone that's wrecking a Scotty, or you'd have to buy another Scotty to replace them. So. Um, make, make sure you have a good look over that. Alrighty, the next check we're gonna wanna do is inside the chain cover. So this is how this machine was presented to myself at time of pickup, just with this bolt in here, and uh, it all loosey-goosey like that. So let's jump in and have a look, eh? So inside in the chain case here, I'm not seeing anything terribly untoward to myself. So the chains look like they're in reasonable nick. The tension seem just about right. And uh, there seems like there's plenty of meat left on most of the sprockets and, and whatnot like that. So I'm not seeing any red flags here. If you are seeing some, uh, some sprockets that are worn, you know, they can run you up to a hundred bucks a hit. So just keep that in the back of your mind. The last thing to check out is the engine. So I was told at time of pickup that this hurdy-gurdy wasn't running. So uh, there are a few things you can check to make sure that it's all honky-dory and you're not getting a dud. The first thing to check on an engine that's not running is the compression. So uh, you wanna make sure it's not seized and it's got compression. So um, we can do that by trying to spin the clutch here. And you can sort of see I'm getting that, that spring back there, just like that. Or you can undo this cover and test it on the flywheel. So to test for compression, what we'll do is we'll grab the little flywheel here and you see how that's sort of rebounding back at me? That means we've got compression. Now, if you can't get your hands in there, you can try and use a shifter. It's the adjustable nut fucker. And you can see, we've got a bit of compression there, which is rad. All right, I'll put that back together. I'm actually reluctant to give you a compression reading, so you can just bring a compression tester, because uh, th there's two reasons for that. One being, uh, I had a quick look online and couldn't seem to find anything. The second of which is I asked a few people and a few people said, oh, no less than 65, no less than 80. And I was like, oh, okay. So uh, I, I grabbed my compression tester here and I'll test them both for you.
So we can see there it's at, it's at zero. I'll give this one a rip. Ah. What do we get there? So we got 55 off that one, that's not too bad. So 55, you know, you might say after three or four more rips, I might have got it up to 60, something like that. I don't know if you can see there, I'm sort of at that 50, 55 mark. Um, so yeah, had I given that maybe two or three more rips, that might have gone up to 60. All right, I'm gonna set, set that back to zero. I'm gonna test the one that actually runs. I don't know if you can see that there. It's only at about 30. Um, that's why I'm reluctant to give you a pressure reading. Right, now that we know this engine has got compression and it's not seized, the next thing to check is spark. So we do that by removing the lead and pulling the spark plug out. The next stage in the process is to, uh, is to earth out the spark plug on something metallic. Now try and find a bolt or something that's a part of the head. And you're not going to want to grab the spark plug up here and pull it because you'll get a jolt. So uh, try and, as best you can, wedge it somewhere or, or hang on to it like that. And then rip the cord. Well, B, she's got spark. And a dodgy pull cord. Does seem a little bit faint though. It might want re-gapping or just a new spark plug. But there's a little bit of life there. So we know the ignition system's sweet. I'll put that back in for now. Alrighty, I know that this engine doesn't run at the moment, but I'm confident in my abilities to be able to get this engine running with minimum fuss. It's got spark, it's got compression, and it's not seized. So the last thing will be air and fuel, but we're not gonna check that out here because it's likely that it's, it might be jammed up or, or gummed up with old fuel. So we can work that out when we get home. Now, if this had been a unit that was running, the last thing would be to do is ask him for a lap around the yard, mate. <laughs> Yeah, you want to take it for a spin, see if it's running, see if it's cutting, uh, seeing if it's doing all the things you want it to do. That way uh, you can walk away confidently knowing that your mower is supposed to do what it's supposed to do. So the other stuff is relatively minor. So we're talking thrust pads or we're talking deflector nuts or adjusters or stuff like that. You know, they're relatively minor details. So um, I can sort of say with confidence that I should have no dramas out of this lawnmower once I get it running. Alrighty, I thought I'd just give you my final thoughts on the Scotty B. Now, what I'm about to say might be a little bit controversial, but I think it's, it, it's gonna add value. They're not a bad unit, eh? Like, considering some of these are up to 50 years old and they provide the cut that they do in a domestic mower, they're not too bad, eh? Like, I think they're a pretty good unit. What I don't believe they're worth is eight or nine hundred dollars. So. At the moment, the market's hot, supply and demand. They're no longer making them, and they're the cheapest way in. So, uh, be careful, all right? I don't want you spending upwards of eight or nine hundred dollars on something that's really needs a whole bunch of work. Now, if it's been fully restored and all of that sort of stuff, yeah, feel free to pay up to that two thousand, two and a half thousand dollar mark, because someone's put in the time to go through and replace it and bring it up to the standard it should be. I've got no arguments there. Had this been 15 years ago, you might have been picking these up for 50 bucks. So, um, again, I get it, you know, it's supply and demand. The market's hot and, uh, and people are paying extra because they want one. So, uh, don't get me wrong, they're not a bad mower, but are they worth 800 bucks as they stand now? No, I don't believe that. Um, I believe they're only worth sort of that 100, 200 bucks. But because everyone wants one, you know, that's supply and demand, man. This is, this is obviously my opinion. If you're paying anything over $500, I believe you're being taken for a ride because, um, because they're simply just not worth it. I just want you as the, as the consumer to, to have that in the back of your mind because the last thing I want is for you to go out and buy one of these and get in too deep because they're generally, to me, it's, it's just not worth that kind of money.
Beauty. Cheers, mate. I'll take it. You'll be right, mate. Lift with your back. Alrighty, all that's left to do now is to tie this bad boy down and get going. Right, so I've just done a, um, a choker hitch around the bottom of the handlebar and then another one across the top of the roll so it doesn't tip over. Don't worry about it, mate. We're not going to Melbourne, eh? Just as long as you pull over every now and check the cargo, should be right. Alright, I'll chat you on. <laughs> 